I am here, privileged to be sitting next to the inestimably wonderful Marilyn Burns from, of course, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Some of you may know of that film. Um, and several others that she might be a little more hesitant to talk about. <laughs> Of course, uh, you were on the Texas Film Commission, working for the Texas Film Commission, and you heard about auditions for a, a little film called Head Cheese at the time. Was it called Head Cheese at the time that you uh, you initially heard about it? Yes. Well, this is... Uh, there was more shows in town, and that Film Commission brought them in. We brought in a great Waldo Pepper and um, Loving Molly. And um, on the set of Loving Molly... I was a stand-in for Blythe Tanner and Susan Sarandon, and um, Toby and Kim ventured onto the set to see what was going on, and they went over and took some chicken from the little uh, trailer that was handing out the meals. And Stephen Friedman, who was the um, was the producer of the Last Picture Show and the producer of Loving Molly, saw these two hippies over there and went, "Hey." Who are those guys? And walked over to him and said, what's your business on this film? And they're just eating their chicken. And he says, you don't belong on this picture. Put, Give me that chicken back and get off this set. Damn hippies, get a haircut and a job. Right. <laughs> so with that, I sheepishly, you know, said, you know, acknowledge my Texas filmmakers. But they were getting kicked off, so I didn't want to be too noticeable. So, but I think when I went to this interview for this movie called Head cheese, and then it was called. Um, oh, there were so many good titles. Head cheese was particularly horrible, <laughs> but th there was some more that were even worse. Um, I'll remember it in a minute. I just tried to block them because I didn't want to be in that movie. But I did audition, and I got the part, and then I found out what I was in for. <laughs> Um, I have to say, slavering fanboys the uh, world across loved the little tight white pants that you wore in that, and the camera also loved. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen the movie countless times. Uh, Toby, <laughs> made a made an emphasis of you in your little tight white pants. Were those yours? I think I bought them at one of the department stores looking for, and brought, bought them, you know, in multiple one, th yeah, I had to go shop. My, I was my own costume here. Mm -hmm. And then I found the purple shirt and something like, it was a thrift, it was a, a cheap store. I can't remember the name of it, but it was down there. And I had like four shirts. And of course, I was my own uh, washer on the movie. So I took my shirts home to wash, put them in, you know, the community washer and dryer in my apartment house, went back for my shirts that have already been shot and, you know, captured on camera. They were stolen. Nobody knew they were shot, you know, for a movie. Someone just liked those purple shirts and took them. And you can't believe me, I go into the dryer, I open it up, and it's not there. And I open all the other dryers and I'm sitting there astounded. Can you believe the one time I would ever have anything stolen from a washer and dryer would be the shirt. And this was, uh, this is you were still doing pickup shots at that point? We're still getting ready to shoot the rest of the movie. Oh. Oh. But it's okay. I went back to the store. They had one in a bigger size. So that was all I could get. So the rest of the movie I was going, be careful with that shirt. <laughs> I've heard uh, from Ed Neal that, uh, the, that they were all laughing hilariously at you during the scene where the hammer is making contact with you. And I heard from you that actually it wasn't a, it wasn't a lightweight thing. It was, a, it was rubberized, but the, the handle, because they hit you so many times, started making contact with your head. Well, if you take a sledgehammer, if you ever looked at the sledgehammer, it was made of steel. Mm -hmm. And then on the end, there's the sledge part. And they took the sledge off and made a pretty paper mache, no, rubber foam version, you know, for the little sledge. So when he's hitting my head, that steel goes right through the foam, you know, and then he's, he's being grandpa, so he's just dropping it. And I mean, it hits so hard that there is blood back there, and you see it in the movie, you know, and by that time, we were so tired, so miserable, 26 hours of all we wanted to do was get out of there, you know. But 
that was above and beyond. And they were hurting me because it was like pulling me. If you watch that movie where they're pulling me down in the bucket, mm-hmm. boy, you know the director, if he wasn't so tired, was laughing, you know, in the background. Yeah, and I heard the story, too, that uh, the, the, your fall from the chair, they just left you there, making sure they got the footage? Yes. I was tied hands to the chair. It was an armchair. It had hands, and then it had my hands. And it, I was tied at, at my feet. And then they had taken this disgusting gag they found somewhere on the set. Someone said, oh, she needs a gag. Someone get something. And someone went in the kitchen and looked on the floor and picked up something, stuck it in my mouth, and it had, never mind. And then they put the... um, (laughs) They hid uh, Leatherface from you, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, We couldn't see any of the mean boys, which was good because when we first saw Leatherface or the hitchhiker... I thought Ed Neal was the grossest looking guy. Well, he had a birthmark they painted on him, and he had raisins for scabs, but they looked like scabs. And they greased up his hair, and he scrunched up his face. Leatherface, he had a mask on that was, you know, and of course there was seed on, he looked weird enough. So they were quite a group to uh, get used to, but so when we actually shot, uh, yeah, I was scared of them. They were disgusting and, and weird. And Jim Seidel, uh, he was he was uh, the scene where where he has you at the uh, the whatever the gas station, and he's clubbing you, yeah. and he's trying in the, being in the gentleman that he was, trying to be tender with it, and at take after take after take. And what did you? What I mean, I understand that you said something to him, like let's get this over with. Yeah, well, because Toby said, Jim, you're not hitting the woman. And Jim said, Toby, I just can't hit the woman. And, I mean, we had done so many takes, and he, he says, Jim, they can tell you're pulling the punches. So I said, hey, Jim, if you don't want to be back here tomorrow night doing this thing all night long, just go ahead and hit me. So with that, when we went to shoot, he cracks me in the cheek, <clears throat> gives me a black eye, and I lay on the floor. When you see me pass down in that moment, mm-hmm. And you see me wake up. What an actress I was! Yeah. Wasn't that great? It, it's great. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a great like scene. Acting. Yeah. <laughs> you you worked with uh, so many interesting people over the years, playing demented types. I'm thinking uh, immediately comes to mind Steve Railsback. Oh, Steven's Helter Skelter was great, mm-hmm. and Steven is the nicest guy in the world. But that was another one that they kept. They oh, they kept Steven totally away from us we could not see him we never knew he was wearing a wig and a beard and sideburns you know it he was real and i mean and when we finally did see steven he was in character and he became manson that was a hard one to play you know because it was a real life situation but railsback was great and then oh i know Stephen made fun of me for being in an independent movie in Texas called The Texas Chainsaw, you know, Massacre. I remember it was Scum of the Earth. That was the original okay, title. Okay. He, you know, he for in his mind, we should have been Scum of the Earth. Oh, Marilyn, you haven't even been in a real movie. So he said all this to me. It was kind of rivalry among actors. We, we became wonderful good friends. But at first I thought, how rude. Uh, but, you know, you just say, well, I guess my movie was kind of crummy. And it was an independent. And though back then, the independents were bad. And that was a dirty word. And so now, let's go many years later in Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. And who's there advertising Helter Skelter at a convention? But Steve Railsback and Marilyn Burns. Mm-hmm. And on Steven's table, I see a tape that says Ed Gein. That's right. He played Ed Gein. And... All these years, you know, Ed Gein is the original man that Texas Chainsaw Story was taken right. on. Little Ed Bean and little Sonny Bean, I or the, or the, the, the family, the Scottish family, the cannibals. Well, it, it was just, Ed was alone at the time. Mm-hmm. And he just, um, he would take, he would bury, uh, babysit the neighbor's children. Mm-hmm. And then if any car got stuck on the road, because he lived out in the boonies, he would kindly help them, mm-hmm. bring the car to his house, tarp it, and then pr- make little masks out of their faces. 
and other like couches out of their skin and so he was this monster and and that's what Ed Gein was about and Railsback ended up playing him so I see Ed Gein on his table and I go man you made fun of my movie back in 74 because you thought it was stupid and it was and now you played Ed Gein Give me a break. We got a big kick out of that. <laughs> it's it's actually he's very good as Ed Gein. Have you seen oh, the film? Yes. You don't know what I was alone at home, and it came on, and I thought, man, he was brilliant, and it was so, and he did it so well. But it's just that history we have of, it's just too funny. It, it really is. And then uh, Neville Brand uh, from Eaten Alive was another one uh, that was just a, a genuine madman on camera. And off. And off. <laughs> uh, I mean, he stayed in character. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, 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 there's nothing wrong with that except if you'd seen Eaten Alive, you'd know you'd like it. That particular monster did quit character when he's not on camera. Yeah, he was a nasty monster in that, wasn't he? he it's yes. a brilliant performance by him. He's oh, wonderful. He was definitely brilliant. So I guess he was really method acting. Mm -hmm. But beware if you're going to be uh, in a movie about a serial killer. Don't get someone like Neville Brand because you might be dead, you know, before the picture's over. I I'm sorry, <laughs> Neville <laughs> So uh, there's a great story that I had the, uh, the pleasure of listening to you narrate earlier, and I'd love you to, for you to repeat it for all of our watchers out there. The first time you brought your family, your parents, to see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or I'm sorry, no, Eaten Alive, and Bobby England with his famous line, I'm Buck and I like to fuck. Tell us about that. All righty. Well, now that you've already brought it up, I'll finish that story. When I saw, when Toby and I saw the movie for the first time, there was some beautiful background music uh, playing and um, different scenes when my name at the very beginning flickered across the screen of Eaten Alive. Uh, I believe at that time known as Death Trap, Starlight Slaughter, and the list goes on. Anyway... I was so proud because it was really big this time. And it, you know, I'm an actress. It was cool to see. And so I told my parents to go see the movie, and they brought all their bridge club. And um, but the, the uh, Mohammed, the, the producer, had added an extra scene. And at the very beginning, you see Robert England in bed with Lynette, and he turns her over on her front and smacks her on behind and she says no not that way and he says oh yeah and then he says my name is Buck and I'm there too and you know the rest <laughs> as my name floats across the stream right on that last word <laughs> and my parents after that has never ever taken anybody to a movie of mine again <laughs> you've been uh, you've been in a lot of texas texas chainsaw massacre because you were in the, uh, the next generation kim's film um you played a nurse it was a cameo part and then you were in texas chainsaw 3d which came out uh, recently and now you're working on a on another texas chainsaw project uh which is going to be coming out i hope in the in the not too distant future um so all of these, you are known as the Texas girl, the Texas Chainsaw girl, uh, and that's something that that's never going to be taken away from you. But it's something that is never going to be taken away from you. You're gonna you're gonna deal with it forever. <laughs> so uh, I've been dealing with it forever. You know, I kept thinking, well, it'll all go away soon. And it's going to be 40 years next um, year, and I figure. Yeah, I don't. I think this time it's not going away. We might as well make the best of it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I, I for one, am, am a huge fan of yours, and I've enjoyed you, your work, and in, in other films as well, Future Kill, and um, you've been in a lot of things. And every time I see you pop up on screen, and I think a lot of people will agree with this, it's a delight and a pleasure, and as almost as much as it has been sitting here and talking to you uh, through the weekend. You're, you're a wonderful lady. And uh, I can't wait to see you on the big screen again. Well, thank you, Jason. Thank it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Terror Transmission.